I noticed you put the computer here thinking I would go back to the Amitabha Sutra and forget about the last two pairs of the four of the eight worldly <laughs> concerns. But <laughs> I'm not going to forget about them. Okay, so last session we, we talked about attachment to money and, and uh, material possessions and then dismay when we don't have them or they're taken away from us. We talked a little bit about what they symbolize to us in our life, which is quite important to look at. And then we also talked about praise and approval and our total hatred of uh, blame and disapproval. Yeah, I mean, we just go buggy with that one. Yeah, then the next pair is, uh, you know, seeking and being clinging on to having a good reputation and not wanting a bad one. So this differs from the praise and uh, and blame one, because praise and blame is what somebody just says to us directly. Yeah, reputation is how we are known to a larger group of people. Okay, so we want to have a good reputation. Yeah, first of all, you just start even the group of people in the retreat. We want to have a good reputation in this group. We want people to respect us, yeah, to think well of us, to think that, you know, I don't know what we want them to think, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, not that we're some dodo living here, okay, but, you know, we have a certain image that we want to make sure that, that we protect, you know, and then just, you know, in the world in general, yeah, we want to be respected, we want honor, we want fame, we want, uh, you know, good reputation. So that doesn't necessarily mean we want to be famous and be on Fox News. God forbid. Um, <laughs> okay. But, but whatever group we belong to, we want to have a good reputation within that group. So if you belong to a Dharma center, in your family, you want a good reputation. You know, especially if you have grown up competing with a sibling, if you're able to have a better societal reputation than your sibling, then mom and dad are going to kind of, you know, kind of like you more, do something, give you some more mashed potatoes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but... Uh, you know, we, we want, when we go somewhere, you know, it would be so nice if our name preceded us and if that were a good name so that when we walk in the room, people say, oh, you're so-and-so. I've heard so many wonderful things about you. <sighs> we can go, you know, and then we feel good about ourselves. Yeah, oh, I must be a good people, a person if all these people have a good reputation. You know, if I have a good reputation with all these people. Uh, I was just, <laughs> I read yesterday an article by um, a figure skater at the Olympics. Um, her last Olympics, I think, were maybe 2006, something like that. So it was a, a while ago. She, she had to retire at age 25. You know, so at age 25, after spending 20 years of your life training and then maybe getting, you know, some medals to hang on your wall that you have to dust, um, <laughs> you know, then after all that work, then you're too old and your body doesn't work anymore like that and you can't do that. And you're retired. And this woman was saying she had only like completed seventh grade because all the rest of the time she was training. So she had a lot of catch up work to do. Then she had to go to college when she got her first internship job. She was 29. Everybody else was a decade younger than her. And, you know, this fantastic reputation she had as an, as an Olympian um, didn't matter anymore. It was what she worked for for 20 years, you know, 
to get those medals, and then it's not worth anything. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? Go to a party when you're 85 and say, I was an Olympian, and they're going to look at you and say, really? <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like one now. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting because we work so hard and do so much to try and have a good reputation. And yet it's nothing that we can hang on to and uh, uh, that in the end is going to be satisfying. You know, and we make the slightest little boo-boo, and we're done. Yeah, it, I mean, it can be a big boo-boo, it can be a small boo-boo. But you're seeing now so many people are resigning from top-notch posts and positions, you know, where they used to be um, untouchable. Nobody could ever criticize them. Then they made a boo-boo some of them pretty big boo-boos, and they're out, you know, and it's all over the front page of the paper, okay? And it started with really big people, names that, you know, a lot of people knew, and now it's filtering down, and, uh, you know, it's like any time you make, uh, not any mistake, I'm not even talking about sexual harassment here, but any mistake, it's like they're calling for your resignation. Um, often it's very politicized, but this is the reality now. And then your whole world crumbles when you don't have your good reputation anymore. Yeah? And then, so there's losing your good reputation, and then there's gaining a bad one. Okay, and so none of us uh, want a bad reputation. We don't want to be known as, you know, that that horrible person that, you know, is so disrespectful and upsetting, or, you know, you don't want the, the tag of, uh, you know, this is somebody who, you know, whatever it is, okay? Um, we want to have a good reputation. We don't want to be known as the person who just takes, takes, takes without giving, without being appreciative, whatever, okay? And so we're very attached to these things. And, uh, you know, you look in your life what you do to try and create a good reputation. I mean, the different ways that we try and be what we think other people think we should be so that we will have a good reputation, the way we're hypocritical, <clears throat> the way we uh, try and pe uh, please people, you know, to have a good reputation, all the things, all the ways that we conceal our faults, that we pretend to have good qualities we don't have, that we, uh, you know, deceive others and deny, deny having bad qualities that we do have, all these things to have a good reputation and avoid a bad one. And it really preoccupies our life. And also in the newspaper you read many times people committing suicide when their reputation goes down or when their wealth is taken away. It's so sad, you know? And uh, so the thing is to really, you know, look in our own lives and how attached are we to this, to the, to the good reputation and not having the bad one? Yeah, because there's many burdens that come with having a good reputation. Um, as soon as, as you win the highest rank or get the highest rank or you're very famous, then you have to do that again. Yeah. So, uh, and this happens, you know, not only in high places, but, you know, ordinary situations that we encounter. Uh, I had a friend of mine who was telling me that in her uh, college, she scored the highest on something, whatever it was. And of course she felt high, she felt, she felt joy at the beginning, and then it was really depressing because she said, how am I ever gonna do that again? 
How am I going to keep up this reputation? Yeah. And especially uh, if our reputation is based on athletic ability or good looks, forget it. We're going downhill. If it's, <laughs> if it's based <coughs> on intelligence, forget it. We're heading towards dementia. Um, <laughs> You know, wherever we look, you know, we see that this thing of being attached to reputation is really, uh, it's a dead end. It's a dead end. Yeah. And I'll tell you my story. Some of you have heard it already, <clears throat> but some of you haven't. So it, it must have been back in 1992 or 93. His Holiness was teaching in Arizona. Were you there? Hmm? Ah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and so they had some of the, uh, you know, His Holiness spoke in the daytime, then in the evening they had other people speak. So <clears throat> somehow I was invited to give an evening talk. And so I think I must have been exceptionally funny that evening, um, you know, People were laughing a lot. I hope they were laughing with me, not at me. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. Um, but then the next day, yeah, uh, then during the break time when His Holiness was teaching, I was, had to go to the bathroom. So I was trying to get to the bathroom and back from my seat because uh, the break is only short. You don't want to not be in your seat when His Holiness starts again, especially if you're sitting kind of up in the front. So, uh, so I was trying to get to the bathroom, and all these people kept stopping me and saying, oh, I really liked your talk. Oh, I really liked your talk. Did you do that? No, I was going to Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because I was going to say, I suffered a lot. <laughs> if you did. <laughs> Because there I was, trying to go pee-pee, and I couldn't get to the toilet, you know? And that's real suffering, yeah, when you're trying to walk there. And all these people, oh, I really like your talk, and you're trying to smile and be polite. Oh, thank you very much. Please, can I go? And, uh, you know, so I really saw there very clean, you know, in my own experience, the disadvantages of having of being recognized in a group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell how much it affected me because this is, what, 16 years later and it's still quite vivid in my mind. Yeah. So, uh, you know, to just check in our lives and, and see how we feel about that, what what's going on in our mind. Okay. And... Uh, you can, yeah, really see what you do to, to try and get a good reputation and how that also uh, we do some of the same behaviors trying to win praise as well. Because we figure that if we get enough people to praise us, then that will result in a good reputation. Yeah. Another danger of having a good reputation is that then we become careless. We think, oh, everybody respects me, so now I don't need to be uh, so much so attentive to my actions of body, speech, and mind, because they already think I'm great, and they so they already think that whatever I do is okay, and so then you do whatever you want and create a ton of negative karma. Yeah. So the 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 reputation or pre, you know prestige can be a big factor in somebody going kerplunk and falling down. And we see this a lot, you know? We see it with movie stars, with sports stars, sometimes even with Dharma teachers, you know, how they get spoiled by having a good reputation and it, it makes them careless, yeah? So to, to be really... Uh, aware and attentive to this kind of thing. Because <laughs> if we're going to relate this to Amitabha practice, okay, 
when you get to the pure land, you're going to be a nobody. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're not a good practitioner and you're stuck in one of the low-level <laughs> lotuses, your reputation is going to be oh, that's somebody we don't even know who they are because we can't see them because there's, they're in this lotus because they didn't have very much merit. Yeah. And then you're in your lotus trying to get out, you know, wondering how chicks break their eggs, you know. But this one depends on creating merit, not on having a beak. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and good reputation doesn't get you into the pure land at all. Yeah. I mean, if you look, what does good reputation do? Does it make you healthier? No. Does it make you have long life? No. Okay. Does it uh, uh, help you to have a good rebirth? No. Does it help you get closer to uh, liberation? Does it help you on the bodhisattva path to awakening? Forget it. You know, any of the purposes that for Dharma practitioners are really important, a good reputation doesn't serve that. Okay? So it's much easier just to, you know, be ourselves and not try and put on, uh, you know, a good face to 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 win a, a reputation. Having said that, on the bodhisattva path, yeah, we don't just say, "Oh, well, reputation isn't important, so I'm just going to do whatever." And if people misunderstand it, that's too bad, and I'll just endure having a good rep a bad reputation because that doesn't matter. That's the wrong way to think when you're trying to benefit sentient beings. Yeah, because if we have a bad reputation, then, you know, who's going to, who of any value, what sincere student will want to come near us if we have a, a horrible reputation? Okay? Uh, so, in that regard, you know, with sincerity for the sake of being able to benefit others, yeah. We want to make sure that we uh, don't have a bad reputation. It doesn't mean we need to have the best glorious one, but at least not have a bad one, such that it would interfere with our being able to benefit other sentient beings.